Everybody, it's Tyler here at Chessie Champs, checking in with 54-19 Berkelium. This is your Milstein Division winners that came in, I remember. Final three coming in, absolutely uh, doing a fantastic job for their lines, sending them on to Einstein. So congratulations on a fantastic year. I love this robot, by the way, so far. We've uh, showcased a couple Cuban cone shares, but it's definitely one of the best out there that I've seen. I just watched her last match super accurate sending cubes from the charge station up and over so i can't wait to talk more about that but we got a lot of our cool stuff as well too talking about some cool things with their bumpers belly pan a uh, cone shooter as well talking a little more about programming let's learn more about this team coming up here on behind the bumpers this video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following the new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more and order today. Fun is continuing to grow and looking for new ad partners for the 2024 season. If your organization has a positive message to spread to our over 250,000 unique viewers, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash contact to get more information. Well, I mean, let's start talking about uh, some of your philosophy behind this year's game here. Uh, your team took a really unique approach to it, so I'd love to hear more about that. And then we'll talk about uh, some of your bumpers and belly pan as well. Yeah. So around week one, we have a whole team meeting and we discuss what the strategy is, like our build strategy. So in that meeting, we wanted to be a fast, uh, low CG robot. So we didn't want to be tippy and we wanted to be relatively small. So from that, we, can, uh, we went into building a robot with we want a swerve drive, uh, and we didn't want anything too high. So we were focused on uh, prototyping uh, mechanisms that could stay low uh, when we were playing the game. Uh, so that was kind of so. After that, we have we start building the drivetrain. Uh, so we start building the drivetrain, uh, so we can have something that code can work on and we can uh, attach our prototypes to. So. That happens really uh, fast at the beginning of the season. And this year, uh, we decided to also CAD in our electronics into the belly pan. So it would be e faster and easier for uh, uh, the electronics sub team to put in all the electronics we need. And they would already have holes uh, drilled where they need to go. So we can just just uh, have the drive chain working as soon as possible. What are a couple of key areas with your electronics that uh, you kind of want to point out in your belly pan? We have these two rails that go uh, through the robot here. So that kind of creates a little bit of a problem for us because uh, fitting everything in, they kind of divide it up. But we were able to fit the PDH very snugly, uh, snugly in the middle of the robot and then have the two main power wires come through the drive chain rail. So that's one thing I want to highlight. Also for our Robo Rio, we were having trouble attaching it to the uh, the belly pan, so because they only have the zip tie holes. So we, we were breaking the zip ties going over the charge station. So we then uh, later on we prototyped. We have a piece of polycarb that we clamp down, so the robo wheels just clamp down with bolts, so we can have it more secure and have no connectivity issues. And how about for your bumpers? You told me you did a couple cool things. You want to highlight on that? Yeah. So. For the bumpers at the beginning of the season, I really liked Spectrum's design from, I think, 2022. They had this like latch mechanism that was on the side of the drivetrain rails. So we tried that out uh, in our first competition, but I think it was kind of our fault. It, we didn't have everything aligned perfectly, so we were uh, experiencing some issues. And bumpers always need to be robust, and we don't want to have to worry about them during competitions. So then uh, mid, uh, midway through the competition season, we actually switched to the 1678 and 971 design with the bolts coming out of the bumpers and then having a bracket on the outside to mount to. So that was kind of a little bit stressful switching in the season, making new bumpers. But it ended up working really well, and we didn't have to worry about them at all uh, later on in the season. Let's keep moving on to Zale. Talk about the uh, Cuber on your robot. This is definitely a huge highlight of your robots. I'd love to hear more about uh, the overall concept coming into it. And of course, a demonstration would be really cool too. For sure. Actually, I think we should we can kind of start off with a demonstration to yeah. show how kind of how it works in general. Because a lot of people looking at it don't really know what it does. But it's basically it's a pivot like that. And if you just want to shoot like mid or low or something, so we can all right like that. Perfect. So it kind of a uh, we figured out early off in the season that cubes were shootable, and we're, we're kind of a fan of shooting different obstacles. And so we decided to start with just with some wheels and figure out what compression was going to be right and all that. 
And we knew we really wanted to do ground pickup too, because to be competitive, we had to do some ground pickup and it was going to be kind of hard to do cones. And so we did try to make it a pivot system, right? Originally though, this gearbox that you can see down here, that, none of that was originally there. So it was originally just a completely dead axle and then pneumatics that would push it out. But we experienced after actually went to the Canadian Pacific Regional. And after that, we experienced a lot of trouble with pneumatics, like just the wires getting cut and all of like the tubes just leaking and all that. So it's definitely kind of, this was a iteration after that competition and it makes it so much more fast and so much just easier for quick pickup, quick release, and there's no wobbling as much, um, which is really nice. And you can see here, it's powered by a Falcon and then these two belts that go like that and it's just intake and exit. Another problem we actually had was we originally were popping cubes a lot and that was because we were trying to, we had two problems. We were trying to either, when we shot them, the torque of the cube being between the rollers was not letting it speed up enough to actually shoot it well. So we tried to create an indexing roller back here, but originally that actually just popped the cube because it would be feeding it into these super high spinning wheels and it would actually just tear it as it went out. So we actually built this motor back here with a beam brake. You can see, uh, I don't know where the beam brake is right now. It's like, it's back here actually on that little bit. And that detects when the cube is fully loaded so it's not touching the front rollers. And that way, when we speed it up and shoot it, it definitely doesn't like, we know it's definitely not touching the front rollers so we can definitely like shoot out and hit it. And that's like, that's the, the wrap for the most part. Something I want to ask you, I watched your last match uh, competing here. Your team was just super accurate shooting from the uh, charge station. And we've seen, you know, other cube shooters out there. But honestly, I don't think I've ever seen as many teams just firmly get a cube in that lower node like you have. What is attributed to that success? Um, I think a lot of that. So we, we really like our driver. He's really, really amazing at what he does. And he knows how to go just to the lip of the charge station so that it just gets over the tip and then shoots it in. I think a lot of it's power though. Like we were originally running a Neo and we wanted a little more power, so we added a Falcon. And we were actually, uh, I think we discovered pretty quickly that like with the, with the compression we had, we had the capacity to shoot it super duper far. The problem was actually air resistance, you know, like after a while it kind of gets squirrely. So low shots means it has to go through less air over total, which kind of makes it like more of a direct line. And it actually lets it go faster and get like to where we want it to go faster. What's the fastest or the furthest you've uh, shot a cube from? Well, so the first we've shot a cube, we've shot a cube across a field actually. Okay. Um, but the furthest we've gotten it in, we actually, we're very proud of, uh, sometimes it'll happen occasionally, we'll get a far shot where it actually gets into the top, the high node from across oh, wow. the charge station. So all the way across the community into the high node. That's like, when that happens, we like take a video and we like have a, we have that's a whole It's clutch, uh, man. Yeah. It's great. It's a, uh, that's kind of our, our proud moment. Very cool. Well, not only do you have a, uh, a cone or a cube shooter, you also have a cone one as well, too. So, Caroline, love to hear more about that as well. I think, you know, that awesome versatility that Berkelium brings is, is just awesome with the robots. So talk to me more about it. Um, sure. So we ended up doing a, at first, in the beginning of the season, we just threw cones onto the nodes and we figured this could maybe be something. So we set up two pieces of wood, two drills, two shafts and some wheels and we figured out that, you know, we could shoot a cone and hit it. And uh, after playing around with that, we figured out that if we changed the velocities on the motors, so they were uneven, we could actually flip the cone over. And so from there, we could hit mid shots from, with just a cube mounted low on the uh, robot. And so we ended up doing that for our first few regionals. We had a, a coner low on the uh, robot and we would actuate it out with pneumatics and then just flip the cone over and we could hit mid somewhat accurately with that. Um, before champs, we ended up adding an elevator and uh, we also changed these plates around and widened the coner. The goal was that we could intake cones more easily because the, the coner was wider and uh, shoot them more accurately for mid and possibly high. And uh, it definitely got more accurate for mid. Can we see uh, how the cone comes in and kind of just describe a little bit about that? And I, I don't know if we can shoot a cone, but that would be really cool too. But I'd love to see the overall operation of this. Uh, sure. So basically we use the uh, single substation. We just slide it down and it intakes. Um, and then for the elevator, it comes out. And Grayson, if you would shoot. You can see basically the wheels move at different speeds, so the cone rotates. I, I think it's really interesting. So uh, watching your cube shooter, it seems to be... Uh, 
I don't know if violence right word, but just a bit more oomph to it. And you see the, the cone come out, and it's just so smooth the whole process through. It's kind of a, an interesting dichotomy between the uh, two parts of your robot. So I really like that. Uh, and the slides look really cool, too, with that uh, as well. So congratulations just on a great uh, overall mechanical design that your robot is proud of. we got to talk a little bit about programming as well, too, Grayson. So talk to me about uh, a couple of key highlights that you want to cover uh, for Berkelium. Yeah, so um, one of the highlights I'd like to talk about is um, last season, um, we built a whole auto line system for shooting our cones um, because we found that um, it was more efficient to have the computer aligned than our driver because kind of to the side and it's a little weird. Um, so we spent a fair amount of time building the system that would auto line to about left, right, one centimeter of our desired like straight on position. And um, that's kind of like the main coding highlight of the robot. It was something that took us a solid couple of months to perfect like by the end of champs was when we really felt confident in our system. And um, also at some point we added a cube auto align, um, kind of using the same code. And we're really proud of that because it ended up working really well. Um, the cone auto align ended up being very, very um, like consistent. We basically got into the right spot almost every time and we're quite proud of that. Well, Berkelium, by the way, uh, as we're filming this right now, you're currently in the top eight here at Chessie Champs, so we can't wait to see, of course, how your performance is here. you got one more match to play as we're filming this, so good luck to the rest of Chessie Champs. But we can't wait to see what you bring for the crescendo season as well, too, coming up in just a little bit. So thanks a lot for taking time. Tell us about your robot, and thanks for being on Behind the Bumpers. Thank you. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more and order today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.